think about the search for innovation in blockchain companies. For any company to be sustainable within an industry, they need to use not just the old frame, but also move to the new frame. As you can see from this diagram, the one is only about the exploits, which is what Snowflake adopted, and they remain there. Um, Having been with Nokia has adopted the Android platform and has adopted, has adopted the, uh, the Android platform. This would have enabled them to move to uh, zone three, which is the reframe level. The reframe level is the one that gives them the chance to uh, to expect more, not just expect more, expect more into the opportunities that they could have achieved and gained in the industry. Open innovation was what Nokia used but they didn't use it very well and they didn't penetrate into it very well as much as as much as it would have enabled the company to survive within the industry. It was it was a necessity for Nokia because it would it would give them access to other talents, ideas and capitals. Open innovation would have been an additional benefit and this would have encouraged them to uh, would have encouraged them to have internal knowledge transfer and absorb physical city. Um, because open innovation is good, is, is very is very useful for a mar for a dynamic market, for a market which is in chaos. For Nokia to remain in the in the industry and be sustainable in the long run, Nokia would have benefited from this. With they have because linkage with customers is very important for any company to survive within an industry. Nokia didn't do this. They didn't put uh, they didn't put their their, custom, their customers and also the threats of new entrants into consideration when they were searching for their innovation techniques. If they had used open innovation more often or very well, it would have enabled uh, Nokia to know what their customers wanted from smartphones, which is not just smartphones that could call or text people. Customers want a smartphone that can enable them to connect to social media also be able to receive emails and reply emails on the go, which is what other other new um, new companies such as Apple and Android adopted, and which has enabled them to survive in the uh, in the uh, it has enabled them to survive and also overcome Nokia in the industry. Alliance with Alliance with rather than acquisition by Microsoft. What we mean by this is, adding with Nokia has gone into an alliance with Microsoft rather than letting Microsoft acquire the company. It would have benefited them as they will still remain in the they will still remain in the industry, still be doing well, and they will still be recogni recognized in the industry as they used to be in the in century ago. Um, this will enable them to benefit from all the knowledge which Microsoft will be bringing in, as both companies are good, are compatible, and will do very well in the industry. Finally, we will be critiquing Nokia's approach to innovation. So we feel that Nokia embraced open innovation, but to a limited implementation. What we mean by that is, for example, Nokia had links with about 100 universities globally. We don't feel that Nokia exploited this. In a similar way to the way BT exploited their links with universities at Adelstrow Park, we feel that Nokia should have brought the knowledge all into one location so that that would enable them to tap into the knowledge and innovate. Secondly, Nokia's pricing strategy enabled them to realize their vision statement of connecting people because Nokia had models across all price ranges. Finally, Nokia's um, made substantial investments in research and development. They made phones that consumers wanted to use because their phone's interface was easy to use. Nokia is also credited with building the first cell phone in the mid-1990s, as well as developing a valuable patent portfolio along the way. Unfortunately, Nokia did not invest in effective marketing strategies, which wasn't compatible with their um, substantial investment in research and development. Also, Nokia's failure to um, adapt or to introduce the Android platform was a loss of opportunity. Nokia phones were renowned for being easy to use. The Android platform is also renowned for being easy to use. And we feel that as Nokia identified that these two um, were, were compatible, Nokia would have gone onto the Android platform rather than Windows, and we feel that this would have allowed them to remain in the, the industry if not be successful. Also, although Nokia wanted to connect people, they didn't have a clearly defined SDP. SDP is segmentation, target, and positioning. 
we feel that Nokia's um, Nokia's aim of connecting people and providing or producing phones for all segments didn't allow them to identify who their core segments were. Had Nokia done this, they could still have been making phones for all market segments while concentrating on segments that would allow them to remain in the industry. Unlike Apple, who make phones that were clearly very expensive, not, um, Apple products were desired by all, even people that couldn't afford them cash down. Because Nokia didn't adopt a similar strategy, it meant that they couldn't stay in the game when bigger players such as Apple and Samsung came along. Finally, Nokia was too focused on cost and technology, which is incompatible with the mobile phone industry. The mobile phone industry is very much technology and innovation reliant. Unfortunately for um, Nokia, consumers will punish um, brands who fail to innovate and to innovate quickly. And unfortunately, this we feel is what led to the demise of the Nokia brand. Thank you very much for listening.